Okay, welcome back. This video is called Back Pocket Exercises, and that's exactly what we're going to give you. Um, those are exercises and activities that you can pull out of your figurative or literal back pocket whenever you need to fill some time. And that really does make the difference between pros and uh, beginning teachers quite often. So expert teachers always have plan B, plan C, and probably plan D. And for that reason, they're almost never frazzled. Um, one common thing that can frazzle us or disrupt is if your first choice for how to deliver or process the lesson isn't working. For instance, if computers or projectors aren't working, I as a teacher can adjust and present my lesson low tech or no tech by writing notes on the board. If my handouts don't arrive in time, I can project one onto the wall or the screen and have my students take a picture of it on their cell phone so they can each follow along uh, on their phone and complete their homework that way. If the DVD or VCR doesn't work, uh, they have an alternate classroom activity on that same topic that I have. If students don't do their reading, so the half hour discussion that I planned won't be effective. Well, an expert teacher would have them read that lesson in class together and analyze an individual paragraph for, say, symbols and foreshadowing. If the school assembly is canceled, an expert teacher has a stack of copies just waiting that will allow the class to play a fun educational game to fill the time. So beyond basic technical issues like those, it's also absolutely necessary to have several exercises in your back pocket if you simply have extra time that needs to be filled constructively. So some examples of these back pocket exercises uh, I'll begin now and they fall into two categories. Um, those that are related to class content and those that are not really related and these can be digital or hard copy. So here we go. Number one, uh, a really excellent example are just YouTube videos of various lengths and the key is to really spend some time selecting these. Um, it takes a long time to find a good video that's the right length and really does a good job. Uh, and they can be vignettes that deal with basic class themes but are maybe tangential enough that they can serve as an attachment to almost any class topic. Um, you can also search for these in your scheduled free planning time. Remember in, in another video we talked about set aside two to three hours a week at the same time of the same day to plan ahead to get copies ready. Um, and this is a perfect time to search for these kinds of YouTube videos. Uh, in my classes, I teach geography, I like to use, uh, I use so many videos, but one of them that really applies to any class and can really go into, lead into any discussion, is a three minute YouTube video that the title is simply Man, if you type in Man, uh, and it shows a, a really brilliantly caricatured but accurate relationship between man and nature. It'll spur a lot of conversation, I guarantee. And it's really good for, it's animated, so it's good for students of, of all ages. Um, and I have my students write a one or two paragraph response to the video, and then we just discuss it. I also use Planet Earth videos. Uh, those are made by the BBC. You've probably seen them. They're incredibly filmed. They have excellent content. Um, and you can really show any portion of any video, and it always seems appropriately timed. In a chemistry class, you could show an episode of Mythbusters, where the hosts determine if putting Mentos into a two-liter Coke bottle will actually make it explode. <laughs> um, for an English class, you could show a video showcasing and comparing different regional acts, uh, excuse me, regional accents and speech idiosyncrasies from around the U.S. or around the English-speaking world. In a physics class, you might pull up a video on electric cars and how they have more torque and faster zero to 60 times than internal combustion engines that might get students interested also for a physics class you could say have some quirky video topics like how trebuchets in the medieval times worked and how they were effective in war there are so many that you can pull out so these activities can also come on paper, copies, hard copy printouts. And so in my classes, I have 
stacks of, uh, well, in my office, uh, an eco-living self-assessment that I uh, got from some other teachers and then I adjusted it myself that students like to fill out based on their lifestyle and their domestic habits. Um, and it gives them a score of how sustainably they live. It takes about 30 minutes to fill out and process and discuss, and I can pull it out anytime I want. And this, again, is related to, you can pull it out in any class. Uh, I also, uh, another great example is that I use is custom-made crossword puzzles. I used these a lot in my fir very first year of teaching. I used to make them by hand, but now you can just go to this crosswordhobbyist.com link that you see, uh, and you can put in uh, class-related terms. Uh, I originally used it for my Spanish classes, but you can use it for any class, of course, and it makes it for you. This website makes it, constructs it for you instantly it's so easy and so great and you can digitally project it onto the wall or you can hand it out um, as hard copies it's a really fun exercise and a great way to learn terms um, and then there are also back pocket exercises that don't have to be related to class at all um, and some of those before you can use if it's not related to your class but these are sort of general ones um, the I have students do a 90 question self-assessment from the book Seven Kinds of Smart. It takes about 45 minutes to complete and process. And the questions only require a yes or no answer. And the overall results give students a good idea of what kinds of intelligences are dominant for them. It's really a great topic because it kind of challenges the idea that we're only verbally and mathematically smart. And if you do well on the SAT, for instance, then you're smart. And if not, then you're not. There's spatial intelligence and interpersonal intelligence and musical. And so there's all these different kinds of intelligence uh, that it highlights. Um, two, you can have students take a personality test. Uh, the best website for that is, in my opinion, 16personalities.com. Uh, it gives you a free Myers-Briggs test, which is the most common. Really fascinating for students of of any age, I mean, below a certain age, uh, it might be tough, but you can gauge your class, of course. And then third here is I have an activity based on the time management matrix, which is I call urgent versus important in Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Really an excellent one for students to teach them about time management. It's pretty mind-blowing if you haven't done it yourself. Um, so students fill in the matrix with activities from their own lives and they categorize them as important or urgent, um, like an acute health issue, important and not urgent, like um, doing homework, physical exercise, planning for the future, not important and urgent, which would be like notifications on your phone or noticing the mail being delivered, something like that. And then not important and not urgent, like watching TV or surfing the web. The power zone in this exercise is in the not urgent but important quadrant, uh, which is planning for the future, doing homework, developing yourself, spending quality time with family members, things like that. And after they see how much time they spend in each of the quadrants, it might shock students or even yourself. It shocks me uh, how much I have to move back into the important, not urgent category. Anyway, that's a, that's a real good one. Um, Another excellent one that I have my students do, which is in, um, is this personal carbon footprint simulation. Um, and you go online and you do it. You can do it on a computer if you have this technology in your class, and which is, you know, if the computer screen is projected up and you can have a student come to the front and go through it and everyone watches, or you can do it yourself. It's really great and really fun and active. They get to choose what clothes they wear and even the, the clothes, what it's made of and the, the amount of dyes in your clothes. And even that matters, what size house they live in, how far they drive in a car every week, what they eat. It's, it's really neat, and you get really specific, like how much beef do you have, how much chicken do you have. It's really specific. It takes about 20 minutes, depending. You can also just go old school and split the class into two big teams, uh, use questions based on recent class content, and play what I call virtual baseball or football on the chalkboard or whiteboard. Um, and each team gets a run or a certain number of yards for each correct answer. I've really found this to be very successful, sort of surprisingly successful. 
for students and I would just use sticky notes and move the runners around the bases and they were just uh, they couldn't have enjoyed it more it was amazingly low tech uh, but that's another example so uh, that's just a big dose of some back, back pocket exercises and you can also develop your own. The whole idea is just to have something and have a few of different lengths so you can pull them out at the right times and some of them you can use again and again such as this last example with baseball or football on the board. And uh, that brings us to the end of this video. Thanks so much for joining me again.